everybody, and welcome to another episode of Leslie Said What? Yes. I am super excited, as per usual, to be here with you all. For those of you who are new um, and first-time viewers and don't understand, like, what is this show about? This show is honestly just about discussing those things that should be discussed that aren't discussed um, and that hopefully lives are being transformed through the transparency that is being broadcasted on this show. Okay, so most of the time when you watch this show, it's going to leave you saying, Leslie said what? Yeah, y'all, I said it. I said it, y'all, I said it. So tonight, I am super excited about my guest speaker who's going to be joining us. She's joining us live from the beautiful, beautiful cold state of Alaska. So I'm super excited that she'll be joining us tonight. Um, in the meantime, always, always feel free to join the conversation. Let us know that you're here. Say hello in the comments. Make comments in the comments so that we can recognize you and address any comments and questions that you want to share. So welcome, everybody. All right. Here we go. So one uno momento, I'm going to bring on my guest speaker. Now, Crystal and I have known each other for a really, really long time, all the way back to high school, probably baby days, probably church days, probably a whole lot of days. Um, but we have known each other for quite a while. Um, Crystal is a army wife. An amazing mom to two beautiful girls. Um, so we want to again say hello. Oh, we have some people in the comments. Hello, Ade. How are you? Um, so we're super excited that you are joining us. Again, always feel free, guys, to make a comment. So I am not going to let the time delay. I am going to go ahead and bring on my wonderful guest speaker. Her name is Crystal Hall. Can we give it up for Crystal Hall? Hey, Woo! hey, hey. Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you are able to join us. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for the invitation. I'm excited. Yeah. Are you staying warm up there? Doing my best, doing my best, <laughs> going out when needed. Other than that, I am staying in and staying warm. Oh, I cannot blame you. I cannot blame you. Good old uh, Alaska. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Crystal, I'm super excited again that you have um, been able to join us. Guys, it is 3 p.m. where Crystal is, even it's though it is 7 p.m. here with it us. Is. So, again, we, we thank you so much for taking out time in your afternoon to meet us. So, yes. Crystal. Let yes. us jump right in. Let's jump right in. Why does tradition hinder the church, Crystal? What do you think? Like, why does it hinder <sighs> the church? I think there's so many things. I think to start off with, I think, um, especially with this pandemic, I think tradition is changing the church right now. It's this pandemic has kind of gotten in the way in a way and, you know, and broke <laughs> up some things that might actually be good, you know. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I will just literally start off with just, you know, being limited when you're um, going to church and you're going to certain churches and, you know, you're raised a certain way. You know, of course, you have to have the foundation, which is Jesus believing the word of God, you know, living according to the word. But I've noticed a lot of times, especially with moving away from home, like we said, I'm in Alaska. So, you know, you get you get stuck in a box. You know, there's things that, you know, you feel like, OK, you know, I wasn't taught to do this or I wasn't brought up to do this. And so when you get older, you start questioning some of those things. Like, of course, I'll talk about the big elephant in the room. And that's the whole wearing of pants and wearing makeup and earrings, getting your ears pierced. And, you know, I live in Alaska and there's a lot of days it's negative 45. So I wear pants. My kids <laughs> wear pants, you know, and a lot of people right. feel that you should be condemned if you wear pants, you know, and I don't I don't feel condemned. I feel warm when I wear <laughs> pants, you know, and I think that's a tradition that's hindering a lot of people from staying in church and being in church, you know, coming as you are or just, you know, having to follow these certain guidelines all the time. Now, uh -oh. you. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry. If you continue, um, it, it, it probably will clear up. Don't even worry. Because we can still hear you just fine. Oh, <laughs> good, good. <laughs> 
But I, th I think a lot of it is just, you know, God is looking at our heart. He's not looking at what we have on. He's not looking at our long skirts, you know, and I just feel like a lot of times we get caught up in our appearance, you know, with makeup. You're not allowed to wear makeup. You can't have on fingernail polish. This is not allowed. You know, it's just it's stuff that that holds you back. And I just feel like, you know, now with the pandemic, we're able to branch off a little bit. We're watching, you know, the services from our own house, being comfortable in your pajamas and your robe or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is you're wearing at home, you're not being judged. And I think a lot of times tradition um, puts a, a, a hindrance where we're judged and we can't be ourselves. We can't be who we are. We can't be who God has called us to be. Um, and then another thing that I've noticed is um, with worshiping, um, it seems like growing up, we were only going to certain churches. We didn't worship with other churches and churches that were non-Black, you know, and with moving out to Alaska, this is our second duty station. Our first duty station was in um, Kansas. You know, it was it was different. It was almost culture shock because we went to a church that wasn't predominantly Black. It was predominantly white. And that was yeah. different from my husband and myself to experience. That was a lot, it was a lot different. We visited other churches before we joined, you know, figured out what church we wanted to join. Um, and it was, it was challenging, you know, because, you know, certain churches didn't look the way we looked, you know, with the long dress and all that, you know, and, but I didn't feel judged. I will say that I didn't feel judged, you know, mm -hmm. when I walked in my church. Children, there are churches that make you feel like that, you know. So, mm -hmm. I think sometimes it's just important. I think we're losing you a bit. Okay, as she as we're waiting for Crystal to um, reconnect, I definitely want to touch on some of the things that she mentioned, like keeping God as the foundation you know, and just sticking with the word, examining mm -hmm. our lives, yep. um, um, making sure that we are lined up with the word. That's the most important thing. You know, the, the outward appearance, God is looking at our heart. He's not looking at so much of what we have on. He wants us to be who he wants us to be. And that's all lined up in the word of God, you know. And I feel like that's just the most important thing, you know, with being out here and um, just making sure that I line up with the word, you know, yeah. I stay warm in my pants, my leggings, you know, when it's <laughs> 45. I don't want to be warm. I don't want to be cold, you know. Yes. <laughs> Jesus, like I said, Jesus wants me to be warm too, you know. <laughs> yeah, especially like you said, not negative 45. I, I just can't even get my head around that. Yeah. Up there. It's, um, it's cold. <laughs> got you. It's real. quite interesting. To yeah. say the least. Yeah. Um, yeah. For those is. of you who don't know, Crystal is actually <laughs> from Virginia like me. So, yeah, that's yes, why her being in Alaska, that negative 45 degree weather is um a bit much. It's different. It's uh, very different. You, yeah. you literally go out there when you need to and you come in. Like, you go, yeah. and I like, there's days that I don't get the mail. I try to wait until, like, okay, it's going to be 40, you know, 40 today. I'll go get the mail today. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's just too cold. <laughs> yeah, no, I can only imagine. Yeah. It's just only too cold, imagine. So. Yeah. Um, so well, as Connie uh, Connie said in the comments, she said, come as you are. So she really agreed yeah. with what you were saying when you were saying, come as you are, come as who you are. And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times what we have to remember, and I, and I think sometime, for, for the most part, most of our churches, um, well, the ones that I've been familiar with, do try to adhere to the, hey, give them time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's always going to be those seasoned um, saints that yeah. have their opinions on right. when someone mm -hmm. is, should be transitioning Ready to move to the next whatever step. Whatever yep. the steps mm -hmm. are and checking the boxes. Mm -hmm. But um, for the most part, we just have to remember that scripture that says, um, you know, as babes desire sincere milk, um, mm -hmm. we have to give milk and not steak. <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> give right. people the chance to drink That's the right. milk That's uh, right. so that they can actually progress. Right. I know for me, like, I totally agree with you on the standards thing. Like, the standards thing meaning, like, um, the tradition of wearing skirts and mm -hmm. then not wearing pants, not wearing makeup, whatever, it's any other. I um, came to that understanding as well that it literally comes down to um, 
not a heaven or hell situation. Right. The only time it becomes something where it becomes suspect is if you decide, like if, if whoever decides right. to mm -hmm. join a church and they're like, oh, I'm going to be obedient to my pastor. I'm going to be obedient to our church standards. Then you have to uh, embrace those things. You can't That's go right. in and rebel in exactly. at people's you know, churches you simply yep. because you don't want to do this and the other. If that's not something you agree with, then by all means, you know, that's what I, uh, in my um, side hustle that I do, they, the, mm -hmm. one of the ladies always says you bless them and release them. So okay. you I bless like them that. and let them and release that's them. Right. Like, and you, you, right. you let it go because it's not for us to save anybody, you know, that's, that's, right. that's between them and God that's and right. our opinions matter not at all. No, it <laughs> doesn't say, matter, matter not at all. I was going to say, they don't matter much. No, they don't matter at all. At all. Um, because mm -hmm. that is where the problem comes in, is people look to people yep. for approval. For the answer, that's right. When people mm -hmm. look to people for um, the pat on the back, say, oh, maybe mm -hmm. I guess I'm going the right way. But that's right. not, it's that's between not you and God. Right. Now, for that's me, right. Mm -hmm. for me, I literally had backed up from mm -hmm. the, tr the tradition of what I, you know, what, well, I know you're in the same situation. Well, was, um, the right. way you were raised <laughs> and wearing skirts and this and the other, and I had backed off. Well, mm -hmm. me personally, I ended up transitioning or in the process of transitioning mm -hmm. back to a more structured, I guess you could say way, because mm -hmm. that keeps me in line because you right. know, like when you, and, and this doesn't speak for you, but it could be mm -hmm. for anybody. But for me personally, like I said, I always try to be transparent because, hey, you mm -hmm. never know. Right. With me, it helps me to be more disciplined. So True. because for mm -hmm. me, it was like, oh, well, technically this ain't a sin. So I'm going to go do this. Oh, right. that ain't a sin. But I'm going to do that. Yeah, so do I was that. to the point where I was getting a little, like they say, when you have a sheltered child that goes off to college and then goes buck wild. Still buck wild. <laughs> I was going, yeah. I was going a little buck wild. Wow. Um, yeah. And so, and, but it helps, keeps me grounded. Grounded. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it was essential. I cannot stress this enough. It was essential that I find the truth for myself and realize right. and come to the understanding that those things were not a heaven or hell issue. That's right. So I'm glad that I took that journey mm -hmm. so that that way I'm not beating people over the head who can do those things. Exactly. Within reason, you know, yeah. there are those mm -hmm. people who can do those things within reason. And for them, it doesn't even contaminate anything for them. But for right. me, girl, I was going to look crazy. I, mean, I can I, understand. I can so understand. For me, it helps yeah. keep me more grounded. So I'm yeah. transitioning my way back into that. Mm -hmm. However, in transitioning and doing that, I'm also being more, what's the word? Um, more focused on my relationship with God. God. If God's mm -hmm. not convicting me of this, that, or the other, then that's between me and God. Right. And so that's right. learning to do that versus, mm -hmm. hey, this is what I'm thinking, girl. Can you tell me your opinion? No. You God said it, for yourself. that's it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's God said truth. it, that's it. That's it. That settles um, it, as they say. <laughs> that song. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have to run it by anybody else. Anybody else. Like, it's that's between right. you and God. Mm -hmm. Now, I know oftentimes a lot of people feel like they go to their, they seek wise counsel from their pastor mm -hmm. by all means, a hundred percent do that. I too. totally get that. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, like I said, make sure that you are under, un, under the understanding of God for yourself, that That's the reason right. you do these things in your church, whether it's out of tradition or, mm -hmm. and sometimes now this is one thing I wanted to bring up as well, is that not all the time. Is tradition bad? Right. Oh no, it's not. You know, exactly. that's right. That's right. There's, there's not, some things. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. It's not all the time that tradition is bad. That's right. It's that um, when tradition becomes gospel in mm -hmm. your church is when it becomes it. bad. I mean, and like I remember even growing up, like not wearing white after Labor Day. I really thought that was in the Bible. Like I'm supposed to wear white after Labor Day. And I'm like, what what chapter, what scripture, where is that? You mm -hmm. know? And that that was just tradition. Like we were taught the women of the church was taught not to wear white after Labor Day. You know, and I'm still like, and even now I'm like, well I don't wear white now because I have kids and for sure you're gonna get something on your clothes. Right. You know? But you know, it's just like I'm like, you know, if I want to wear white, is it okay if it's after Labor Day? <laughs> like yeah. you know that's mm -hmm. not in the Bible, you know? So I think it's certain traditions that, that are not, um, 
scripture backed up. You know, it yeah. has to be some some type of scripture or something to make you, you know, feel that, you know, this is what I should be doing. This is the right thing to do according mm -hmm. to the word of God. There's and then there's another one that I was talking to a, a older person about and she said that you know, back in the day, the men weren't allowed to wear um, blue shirts or shirts that were colored. They could only wear white shirts. Mm -hmm. Why is that in the Bible? You know, just yeah. things like that that mm -hmm. can hinder you, you know, from like, you know, and then you have to come up with your own ideas about it and, and kind of figure it out and say, Lord, is this, you know, something that I need to be following? You know, if not, mm -hmm. then wear yourself a blue shirt on Easter. Like, you know. <laughs> Go for it, you know. I'm serious exactly. because it's like you get caught up into mm -hmm. like what you're supposed to wear. And, and I know that a lot of the churches that I attended, it was real on what you were supposed to wear. That was like the biggest issue. Um, and I know another thing, one more thing. I'm so sorry. I oh, you take your time. time. We've, we were there good. was another thing I noticed with, with um, uh, going to different churches, um, especially in, in Kansas and a few up here. Well, we only went to really one church up here, but in Kansas, they don't have choir anniversaries. There's different things that they don't have. And it's just like, where did this stuff start? You know, choir anniversaries, pastoral anniversaries and different things that we are used to supporting because you have to do these things, you know, mm -hmm. and then you get caught up when you're in a, um, a choir anniversary, what you're supposed to wear and they want to wear regular clothes and this person wants to wear robes. And then you have a whole conversation on shoes. And, and it's just <laughs> like, why are we doing this? You know, it's, oh my gosh. Yes. It really makes the thing, especially when you're like, you, you know, you've moved and away from home and you've traveled and you see these things and it's just like, wow, you know, all these years we've been going back and forth over the wrong issues, you know, that's, that's hindering people, you know, yeah. certain mm -hmm. outfits and what's, a, you know, and, you know, I, I did grow up and I still keep my foundation firm as far as, you know, dressing appropriately for church, you know, not having, you know, parts of your body exposed and, you know, having garments that's, you know, inappropriate that you can see through them or anything right. like that. You know, that's the foundation of the word. We have to stick with that, you know, mm -hmm. but, you know, there's just other things, you know, that I've learned that it's just like, I don't want to be hindered. You know, the church does not need to be hindered from these things. It's taken away from God, from seeing God, mm -hmm. from seeing the word of God, you know, and, and living the word of God. If we're focusing on someone new coming into the church and what they're looking like and what they're not wearing and what they are wearing, it's. Yeah, it's just yeah. It's something that I think, and I think now, like I said, with the pandemic, it's broken up some things now. Some mm -hmm. churches are closed. They're not allowed to operate over a certain amount of members, you know? So it's like in a good way, those things are kind of, you, you're able to examine them, examine them better. You know, you're not, you're more comfortable maybe at home with watching, you know, and, you know, being included in the service versus being there and feeling watched and, yeah. you know, talked about, you know, so. That's a really good point. I hadn't even yeah. thought about it like that. Yeah. But the, but I wonder, like, just like off, wondered if there was a way to tell, like, the increase of attendance mm. via online than it was in person because of that reason. I think that would be very interesting. Yeah, yeah, that it, it is, yeah the statistics right. would be quite yeah. interesting to interesting. see. Yeah. Like, just saying, because literally what ends up happening is like people who can't, like you said, oh my gosh, the choir anniversary. <laughs> yeah. And like, hey, you got to buy this suit to match this. The, the match. Anyway. I know. I have like, been there. I just many, cannot many figure years. out where all that stuff came from. Like, I mean, it's fine. It was a tradition. Yes. Fine. And that's, that's yeah. good. Hey, if, if that's what you want to do, fine. But do not feel, make me feel as if. It is something that I must be consumed with in order to mm -hmm. achieve salvation. What? Yes. And that's where what? it gets caught up. Like if mm -hmm. you don't have this and you can't sing, well then if I can't sing, then I'm not giving God glory. I'm not using what my gift. talents that he's given me. So now I'm put back in that box again. You know, it's just that box just keeps it's there, you know, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, why even, why even, um, focus on these things all the time, you know, yeah. I've even asked people about the whole, you know, situation with not wearing pants. Where's the scripture? Like, can you literally show me that or show me a scripture of this or that, or where we're not supposed to do this, or where we're not supposed to be that, do that so that I can kind of get a better idea. Okay. You know what? I bet not wear pants. You know, I'm really going to feel, and I will say this, when we were in Kansas, I was expecting my second, my second child. And it got to the point to where I couldn't fit some of my clothes, you know, and I, at that time, you know, I was seeing members of the church go to church with pants on, you know, and I told my husband, I was like, I'm kind of like torn because I want to go to church, 
but I don't have the attire that I want to wear. You know, I don't mm -hmm. have, you know, and I was like, and I knew I wasn't planning on having any more babies. So I'm like, I don't want to go out and spend a whole bunch of money or more maternity clothes and all that. And yeah, had like maybe two months left, you know, and at the time it was kind of cold. It was chilly there. So I wore, I literally wore um, leggings to church and I had a long sweater to cover everything. And, you know, of course my husband, you know, he'll let you know, you know, I ask him, you know, how does this look? Is it too tight? Is it too short? And he's like, oh, you look good. You look fine. You know, and I'm like, I get in church and I'm feeling like, I'm going to be judged. I'm going to be judged. I'm going to be judged. And I'm like, you know, I can feel my baby kicking. I'm going to be judged. Stay still. Don't move. I'm going to be judged. <laughs> I'm going to be judged, you know? And I'm just like, it shouldn't feel that way, you know? Yeah. And I was able to praise God and get into the service. And then I've enjoyed myself, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of times we put too much attention on the wrong things. We need yeah. to focus on, you know, getting people into the church and, you know, helping them get saved and, and not being a hindrance to them, you know, and being right. in their ear that, hey, you shouldn't have that on and you shouldn't put this on or you shouldn't do this. You know, I think after a while, once you're in church a while, you'll know, you know, oh, God for sure. will, you will know you will search the scriptures and it will be it will just come to you and you'll It'll say, OK, that's you, inappropriate. Naturally. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just I think we have to give people space and time to yeah. figure it out, you know, and I mean, that's not salvation, like we said wearing pants, not wearing pants. That's not salvation. God is looking at our heart and he wants us to do right, treat each other right, you know, do what he told us, told us to do in the Bible. And I think that's where the most focus should be. Mm -hmm. And then we won't hinder other people. Personally, that's the way I feel. Yeah, because the two greatest commandments is love God with all your heart, soul, and mind and love that's others right. and yourself. That's and right. We are so no. big on checking all the boxes, mm -hmm. but stepping on people, hurting people in the process. How's that right. love? How is, how's that adhering to the two great commandments that God said? Like yeah. we, that is 110% where we should be focused on far more than anything else. Mm -hmm. And it's That's like, right. we all God called us to do is to love them. Mm -hmm. um, he can, he'll do all the changing. We just need That's to right. love them. That's and right. so, you know, and then if it comes down to a point where they need this or, or want to consult you or whatever, this and it, fine. Okay, by all means, share with mm -hmm. love. Don't that's beat right. anybody over the head. No, that's I had someone where... to do that. And that's, it's a horrible feeling. Like, yeah. I mean, it makes you choose like, okay, now I don't want to go to church and you shouldn't feel that way. I've had somebody say something like in the past when I first got married about the makeup that I was wearing. And I was literally, like I wasn't wearing anything bright or neon green or neon orange or anything, but I was just trying out the colors to figure out what colors work with my complexion, you know, my mm -hmm. skin tone. And I had someone to really approach me like on a couple different Sundays, oh, you shouldn't be wearing that. And I'm just like, really? <laughs> and you know, I really, when I would get home, I would like have a moment. I'm like, you know, almost in tears, like this person is like really bothering me on a Sunday basis, you know, like, you know, what am I supposed to do about this? You know, and it made me feel like I didn't want to go to church. And whenever yeah. you feel that way, that's a hindrance. That's a problem. If you feel like, you know, and I was trying to avoid that person, like I see that person come in, I'll kind of tuck the other way. And that's not how you should live, you know, especially with going to church, you shouldn't feel the need to duck people like that, you no, know, just never. So that they won't be coming to you asking questions and making comments, you know, and it, it really got to me. It really did. I'm, I'm going to be very honest. And then that's where the church hurt comes from, you know, and people d decide they don't want to be a part of that. So they stop going to church. And, you know, for me that I was brought up in the church, I'm not going to let that hinder me, but so much, right. you know, and I, I feel that I've grown spiritually because that person that I was, I didn't say anything, but now I might would you know, just say, you know, I feel fine. I feel good with the way I'm dressed and I don't feel like anything's inappropriate. And then at the same time, I don't have to explain myself. A lot of times we end up having oh to explain God. ourselves. And I'm like, why am I explaining how I feel to you? You know, it just doesn't, it doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense sometimes, you know, yeah. but that person eventually did leave me alone. She did. She kind of backed off of me a little bit, you know, but yeah, and I felt very judged. I felt very, and it almost felt confrontational. You know, and then, and then I mean, I, my husband was looking at me, you know, after I would get dressed and he said, I look good. You know, I look beautiful or whatever. So, you know, why was all of that needed? You know, it's just it just threw me off. It, it threw me off. So, yeah, no, and I that, completely the whole church hurt comes from. That's like another whole conversation, as you have already, you know, done in the past with, this yeah. show. you know, it's another <laughs> whole two or three episodes or series for real. You know, yes. No, I totally. Mm -hmm. 
totally get that. Clum says hello. Hey, <laughs> how you doing, girl? Good to hear from you. <laughs> um, but you're a hundred, hundred, like I said, hundred and ten percent right on that. Like we legit need to just love on people and give them a chance. And like the thing is, like you said, like nobody, like church should be the place you go to that you can just walk Thank in you. and just feel the love. Mm-hmm. And like, this is my happy place. This is that's my right. place of peace. This is my that's place right. of joy. Mm-hmm. Like that's what your church should feel like. That's right. Um, and so, like I said, like not all tradition is bad. No, it's a not. lot. Some tradition makes a huge impact Difference. and can be yeah. the discipline that some people need like me. me. That's I need great. the discipline. Yeah. Um, and then for you, it's something opposite. So it, it yeah. it's again finding your way. <laughs> hey girly, it's all about finding your way. Yeah. You know, and mm-hmm. and then once you find your way, don't just remember it's God's will over yours, you know. That's right. While that's we, right. we find in our way, yeah, it's not our right. way and our way, will, will that will. needs to be done, but it is. we gotta cut it. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean I, exactly. I try to keep that in mind too, because you know. Now I, I have the the yoga uh, um, leggings and I'm loving them, you know, and I'm just yeah. like, okay, you like, I, I, I'm like, you know, no matter how much weight you gain, they're there for you. There's always two things that's always going to be there for you. The good Lord and your leggings. Your like, yoga leggings. You can, you can count on them, you know, for whatever, yeah. you know. And so, you know, I do have to be conscious and be like, okay, you know, especially if I go to the gym or if I'm working out or whatever, just making sure things are appropriate. If I don't feel that it's appropriate, then put on something else, you know? And I do try to keep that in mind because that's important. I mean, it's, it's part of who I am, who I was raised to be and who God wants me to be. So if it's not in line with the word, then I must change it. Exactly. And it's, and that's what it it comes with uh, Romans 12 and one, where we're supposed to sacrifice Mm -hmm our That's our right. bodies mm-hmm. for his will and purpose That's so right. it's like um i was i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god yes. that you present your yes. body, body a living, living sacrifice, sacrifice holy, holy and, and acceptable unto god which is god. His, That's your, right. his reasonable, reasonable servant, servant. Uh-huh. yes That's right. and the thing is is like um and then at the end it says, and then you will, you know, know his good, acceptable and perfect will. That's, right. That's what we're supposed to do is be the mm-hmm. sacrifice. But mm-hmm. we just have to realize that not everybody's sacrifice is the same. The same. So for me, like I, like I said, I'm converting back to what I know as far as mm-hmm. holiness standards of right. wearing skirts, so, of yeah. of doing those things. But mm-hmm. that's for me to keep right. myself grounded and more mm-hmm. disciplined. Because like mm-hmm. I said, girl, I went far left real quick, real quick, <laughs> okay. girl, real quick. Because I was like, oh, girl, I ain't got to do this because I'm still safe if I do this. I'm still safe and if I do this. That's right. That's yeah. important. That's important because it will, you, you'll you push the boundaries and you can't push. And that's the same for me too. Because like mm-hmm. I'm into, I have my ears pierced and I wear like my little dangly earrings. And then there's some earrings I go in the store and they're like down here and I'm like, <laughs> No, I ain't wearing that. <laughs> like, I wear my little ones, you know, whatever. But I'm like, I'm not wearing that. And then, you know, I have my nails painted and stuff, you know, my mm-hmm. polish, my pinks and my reds and stuff that I do like, mm-hmm. you know. But then I was looking on Pinterest trying to get some spring ideas and I saw some crazy, I saw some crazy stuff. And I'm like, You're no, like, yeah, I felt man. convicted then. <laughs> I was like, no, I ain't putting all that on my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And That's I love how you said convicted <laughs> because you're, you remain open to right. hearing his voice That's and right. to receiving the mm-hmm. conviction, That's not right. the tradition, the conviction, the conviction. There's a the difference. There it is. There it is. There yep. it is. I was looking, I was like, Oh gosh, that's cute. You know, and the, it'll be young bringing them bright colors to you, you know, them really yeah. crazy looking things, stuff that you wouldn't ordinarily wear. And I was like, no, exactly. I'm not going to. About that far, you know, I'm not, yeah. I'm gonna, you know, you know, because I mean, I think too, like with certain traditions, you know, I think sometimes when you're, you're, you're brought up a certain way, you do feel like for me, the makeup and getting my nails done, that made me feel more of a, like a woman, more special, you know? Mm-hmm. And I know that I have a lot of friends that feel like that too. Like, you know, I don't do, I don't wear makeup and I really don't wear makeup. I would make wear it to church. I wore some today, but my kids hardly ever see me in makeup, you know? And I, I want them to know that beauty is skin deep and you should feel beautiful no matter what. But, you know, I, I wear it to enhance what God has given me. You know, some yeah. days I got the bags. And so I want to cover the bags the best I can, you know, yeah. or the, the dark circles, you know? So, 
I feel like that we, I just, most of the time, I just, well, all the time, I just have to make sure that it's in check. Like we've talked yeah. about. You That's know, what just it all making sure you're to. not going too far with it. You still want to look like a saint and not an ain't. You know, you still yep. want to look appropriate, you, but you still want to look good. You know, it's yeah. nothing wrong with that. You know, we're not working all the time in the spirit. We are in the flesh, but we mm -hmm. do have to have spirit minds, spirit like exactly. minds. You know, we want to be like Jesus, but we're also human. You know, you want to look mm -hmm. attractive. You want to look a certain way, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that's I why modesty is key. Key, it is. It is. You can wear a little bit, you know, a few rings or something, but you don't want to look like a Jezebel. I remember hearing that growing up, you know. Yeah, and like back in the day, like the red um, polish was like completely. If you wear red polish, it's just like, oh, you're a complete sinner, you know. And I'm Girl, just red saying, period. Yeah, yeah, red period, exactly. Lipstick, any of that, and you know, and I'll I'll dip into my reds around Christmas and Valentine's Day, you know, and stuff like that. But I don't carry it too far. You know, I just yeah. try to make sure I remain, you know, because I do, like I said, I will feel that conviction. Like, oh, girl, you ain't supposed to be doing that. Or, girl, you can't order them pants. You know, they too tight. You know, you ain't even going to be able to fit in them. You, know? yeah. <laughs> you get one leg and then that's it. Half of a leg if possible. Oh, my gosh. You no, know, that's yes. fuck. You know, I mean, God, you know, you, you literally sometimes you do have like, of course, we're always supposed to operate in the spirit, you know, mm -hmm. but the flesh will talk to you a few times, you know, you will get that back, you know, a little bit, you know, where For you, sure. you can, you know, push the boundaries just a little bit, but you have to reel it in. You got to remember to keep the foundation, you know, and the it's foundation so true. is God it's so and key. it's the word of God. Mm -hmm. Foundation yep. and conviction. And, and conviction. the thing is, is your relationship with God, if it's, and keeping it strong enough that you can receive that conviction, That's that right. godly conviction when conviction. necessary. Mm -hmm. And I mean, my husband will tell me if I put something on, he'll be like, no, that's, you know, too tight or, you know, not yet. Don't wear that yet or something. And you'll feel it if you put something on and it doesn't feel right or it doesn't look right. And it, it, that whole conviction, it'll go yep, right back to it every structure. time, every that single same. time, every single mm -hmm. time. And there's some clothing stores that I can't even shop at anymore. I can yeah. just window shop and be like, oh, that's so cute, but I can't wear it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's the case with Romans 12 as well, where it says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed, transformed by the union of mind. Because your mind, yes, mind, aka your conscience, mm -hmm. will let you know mm -hmm. when something is not right. That's right. I mean, so. you could look at the whole outfit and be like, girl, that'd be cute with a pair of shoes or with this or that. And you'd be like, girl, I can't wear that. <laughs> no goodness, you got the whole outfit in there <laughs> and you got to be able to breathe. Breathe. Like that. Michelle said you got to be able to breathe. <laughs> you got to breathe. You don't, Trying you know, to I, remember even, breathe. I remember even growing up with wearing just dresses and, you know, like outfits, like two piece suits. You know, and not the stomach is a little bit bigger than normal or something. And you'd be sitting in church like this the whole yes. service and you can't praise God, you know, or you got those cute pair of shoes on. You got to take them off because it's hurting. The pinky is hurting or something, mm -hmm. you know, just different things like that. You know, being being comfortable to praise God, to worship God, you know, just yeah. especially in church, you know, just being comfortable, being presentable, but comfortable, you know, and, and I remember sure trying to look breathe. the part, like, because I had married an a minister, girl, yeah. I was like, oh gosh, now that I married a minister, gotta I, gotta the I gotta wear the hat, <laughs> the I gotta wear the, the suits with the, the matching, matching purse yes. and the matching heels, girl, not comfortable, not, no. I repeat, not, not comfortable, comfortable. People. no. Them suits are not comfortable. I can't even no. understand them hats. Girl, I'm no. getting myself. Like, especially when the pastor go to pray for you and you're trying and to the position the hat right. <laughs> trying to hold and it. like, oh, God. Girl, not comfortable. Yeah. I completely Abort agree. Abort mission. Right. <laughs> exactly. I completely agree. I completely agree. Yeah. I mean, I wore a lot of those too with hats and stuff and I sweat. So like after church, you could see like that line where the hat mm -hmm. left and your head be, your hair be matted down to. Yep, girl, that enough. was me. Cause I was like, oh, that's what we got to do. Dude, I'm married now. Right. I got to look married. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. But yes. Anyway, I know yes. you have to go get your daughter. Yeah, I've enjoyed this. This same. has been a blast. Yes, I've enjoyed same this. thing. I have enjoyed well, it. I am going to let you go. I'm going to stay on for a little bit, but thank okay. you, thank you, thank you so much, thank Crystal. You. Yes, thank you go for get having your girl. Me. I will. Hello. I sure will. You take care. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Um, we are so grateful that Crystal took some time out of her busy schedule. She is a busy mom 
and she is um, an army wife. She's living up in Alaska. And so she joined us live from Alaska today. And we were just so excited that she could take time out of her day to meet with us prior to going to go pick up her daughter. So we thank you. Thank you again, Crystal. Um, Michelle's comment was, once you hit 50, you understand comfortable is the key to true worship. Now, that's hilarious. Yes. Yes, Michelle. Say that 10 more times. Um, and then, oh, Clemmer, we're glad you enjoyed Crystal. That is awesome. So glad. Now, I got a little treat for y'all for next week, okay? So next Monday, Grammy... I think I think Grammy Award winning Francesca Best Battistelli's mother will be with us next week. And guys, you don't want to miss this. Now, if you also are blessed to um, have watched uh, what is it? Chats at the Cubby Hole with Marlo. Um, Coffee Chats at the Cubby Hole with Marlo, then you would have seen her there before. Her name is Kate Battistelli, and we cannot wait to meet with her next Monday. Kate is going to join us and she's going to talk about the question. Wait for it. Wait for it. The question will be, what happens when God changes your dream? This will be next week with Miss Kate Battistelli and we cannot wait until she joins us. Um, again, oh, Clem, <laughs> that's hilarious. Yes. So we are super excited that Kate will be joining us. Again, as always, thank you all for being with us. Thank you all for coming. We cannot do this without you because who can have a conversation with just themselves? I mean, let's be for real. So again, tune in next week for What Happens When God Changes Your Dream with Miss Kate Battistelli. Have a good one, everybody. I'm going to be out. <laughs>